What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. Moving on to the next question in the unit one test for advanced functions. What I'd recommend with all these questions is you pausing the video at this point, try it yourself, try to see if you could get the domain and range of each of these relations and then also state whether it's a function or not and then watch the video after and compare your answers. You're gonna get a lot more value doing it that way. So let's get into these. So we got part A here. Notice that we have this <clears throat> mapping diagram. We got 0, 1, 2 for the x values, and they're all pointing to this y value of 3. So personally, what I like to do with these kinds of questions is I like to take a diagram like this and convert it to just coordinates. So notice that we'll have an x value of 0 and a y value of 3. We'll have a x value of 1 and also a y value of 3. And then we'll have an x value of two and a y value of three, like that, right? So these set of coordinates is the exact same as that mapping diagram right there. And then what you could do is you could quickly plot these. So zero and three, that's like here. One and three, that's over here. And then two and three, that's like right there, right? So now you could clearly see better, is this relation going to pass the vertical line test or not? Now. Notice the domain, because this is just a set of coordinates, well, the domain, you would just write out literally the x values from largest to smallest. If any were repeating, you wouldn't want to repeat them over here, but they would never be repeating in a diagram like that. But sometimes you might just get a graph and they could be repeating. If certain x values are repeating or certain y values, you just write them once when you are listing out the points in the domain. And notice that we wouldn't write any x, e, r, y, e, r in this case, because what that would imply is that there's some kind of like continuity going on there. It's like all the x values there, right? These are only specific x values of zero. We got an x value of one. We got an x value of two, right? So the domain is just those numbers listed out. The range, well, notice this whole time, there's only one y value, right? We only got this y value of three. So you would just list out that y value of three like that. And then is this relation a function? Well, notice that it passes the vertical line test. There's no uh, part in this relation where there's going to be two x values that have the same y value, right? This passes, this passes, this passes. So we know that this relation is indeed a function. Okay, moving on to part B. Now in part B, notice that we already have the um, graph right here. It's a sideways parabola, has this vertex here at two and zero. So notice that the domain of that relation there, it's going to be, notice it could be any x value as long as the x values are less than or equal to positive two, less than or equal to, right? Because it's all the x values to the left of this x value of two. And then notice that the range, it could be any y values, right? Because this keeps going on forever. So basically all the y values from negative infinity to positive infinity are gonna to be touched at some point. So it's basically y, e, r like that. And then is this relation a function? Well, it's not because notice that it's failing the vertical line test, right? There's gonna be multiple y values for a single x value throughout this relation. It only has to happen once, but notice this is happening like a bunch of times throughout this relation. So no, this is not a function like that. All right, and then moving on to part C, we got this function. Whoops, I kind of gave the answer right there. I should have said we have this relation, but y equals four sine x, it is indeed a function. Basically what happens here is um, the domain for a trig function for a sinusoidal function, that's going to always be XER, if you remember from grade 11, right? That just continues on forever. Now the range is going to depend on two things. It's going to depend on the amplitude for, but it's also going to uh, depend on the equation of the axis, which is just zero. It's always going to be the C value. In this case, it's just zero. So what's happening 
is the way that this function looks is the equation of the axis is zero, which is just the x-axis, and then it has an amplitude of four. So what's gonna happen is it's going to be fluctuating between, and it's gonna keep going this way as well, it's gonna fluctuate between negative four and positive four, right? If this was like an equation of axis of one, we would be shifting it up by one, then we'd have a max of one plus four, right? The equation of the axis plus the amplitude, which would be five, and then the minimum would be one minus four, which would be negative three. So then the range would be in between those values. But in this case, the equation of the axis is just zero, which is just the x-axis, and then the amplitude is four. So it's plus or minus from that equation of the axis. So it's basically all y values, and then the minimum value is gonna be negative four, and the maximum value is going to be positive four, like that. So that ends up being the range. The range for a sinusoidal function is always going to be between the minimum and maximum. And then is this a function? Yes, it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. At no point does it fail the vertical line test throughout its entire domain. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you wanna see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.